In this video, we will demonstrate the disassembly and the rebuild procedure for the OPW-295 series nozzles. Please be sure to go to our website at opwglobal.com and find the parts diagram. It can be easily found by simply typing 295 nozzle into the search field. When you find the nozzle you are looking for, click on it to display the product page, where you will find all of the resources available for this product. Within the resources, you will see a tab labeled Replacement Parts. When you click on this tab, you will see a diagram of the nozzle and all of the replacement parts available for it. Let's begin our procedure by reviewing the tools that you will need for this task. You will need a flat bladed screwdriver, a 964th Allen wrench, needle nose pliers, channel lock pliers, 5 8 box end wrench, 7 16 box end wrench. 7 16 socket with wrench and extension, a strap wrench. You will also need assembly oil, commonly called molly grease. You should always apply a thin coat to the sealing surfaces when reassembling the nozzle. Finally, you will need some medium strength thread locker. Remove the hose from the nozzle and drain the fuel from the nozzle body, ensuring that all residual fuel is drained from between the check valve and the main poppet. The easiest way to do this is to squeeze the lever and tip the nozzle forward. Be sure that you clean any residual fuel from your work area and dispose of the fuel in accordance with your company policy and environmental regulations. With the nozzle secured in a vise and using either a strap wrench or pliers, loosen the spout tip to remove the strainer. The preferred method is to use the strap wrench to prevent marring the finish on the spout. With the spout removed, pull out the strainer. Clean and check it thoroughly. If you find any holes in the mesh, then immediately replace the strainer. Check the O-ring and replace it if necessary. During this procedure, be sure not to lose the O-ring or the main gasket that seals the spout to the body. This O-ring is very important. Debris that may be in the fuel could bypass the strainer and go into the aircraft tank if the O-ring is not in place. Using the 7 16 socket, remove the bolts holding the handle to the nozzle body. There are four bolts, but not all of them are the same length. The two toward the spout end are longer than the other two, so note the difference when replacing them. The chain will be attached to one of the longer bolts while the grounding strap is attached to one of the shorter bolts. While you have the grounding cable off, please inspect it for fraying or a loose clip. Replace as necessary. Please note, the pin that holds the lever to the poppet assembly is not secured once the handle is removed, so be careful that it doesn't slide out and become lost during the remainder of the disassembly procedure. Using the 964th Allen wrench, loosen the three retaining screws and gently pull the swivel out of the nozzle body. Rotating it as you pull it out may help you. Next, remove the O-ring and continuity ring from the nozzle housing. The continuity ring maintains the grounding between the swivel and the nozzle body. Often the plastic washer will remain in the nozzle body when the swivel assembly is removed. Be sure to remove this as well. Remove all of the components from the swivel assembly above the snap ring. Then using a screwdriver, carefully pop the two-piece retaining snap ring loose and remove it. Next, remove the retaining ring. Notice that this retaining ring is keyed with flat inside edges. Then slide off the plastic bearing and the retainer. This is the ring with the three threaded holes. Finally, remove the felt washer and the plastic bearing. Clean all the surfaces of the swivel before reassembling. Check for any scratches or burrs that could cause the assembly to leak. Please note that some models of this nozzle may also have a washer, spring, and poppet inside the nozzle housing once the swivel assembly has been removed. Remove the pin that attaches the lever to the top of the nozzle housing. Next, remove the two remaining bolts in the top of the poppet assembly. Remove the poppet assembly from the nozzle body, clean, and inspect it. Often, the poppet seal will stay on the body of the nozzle, so be sure to remove this and clean the surface where it sits as well as the underside of the poppet assembly. 
Please note that if you are seeing signs that the nozzle is leaking around the poppet assembly, a likely culprit is the seal or loose mounting bolts. Also clean and inspect inside the nozzle housing where the poppet seals. Make sure that there are no burrs, scratches, or debris on this surface. Place the poppet handle side down in the vise carefully. When tightening the vise, be sure not to tighten it so much that the flange becomes bent or scratched. You never want to do anything to mar or warp the sealing surface of this flange. Clean the sealing surface thoroughly. Using your needle nose pliers, remove the cotter pin. Be sure to keep your hand on the end of the poppet assembly while doing this so that you don't lose any parts. You will notice that the outer o-ring on this poppet is a floating o-ring, meaning that it rolls up and down rather than being tight on the outside of the main poppet. Remove the main poppet, o-ring, outer spring, and skirt. Inspect the skirt and gasket to ensure that no debris or film is interfering with its sealing surfaces. Also clean the groove on the poppet flange. Now disassemble the secondary poppet by flipping the assembly over and removing the small cotter pin in the lever rivet. Remove the rivet and the lever and slide the stem out of the poppet assembly. Check the stem to ensure that there are no scratches or burrs. Next, remove the 5 8 hex head and retainer. Under the retainer is a felt washer that must be removed as well. Finally, remove the plastic stem bushings from the top and the bottom of the assembly. Then remove the o-ring from inside the poppet assembly. Be sure to check the sealing surfaces of the poppet flange for damage or debris as well as the orifice to ensure that it is not clogged. If it has any obstructions, this could affect the ability of the nozzle to shut off. Insert one of the white bushings into the bottom of the opening and insert the greased o-ring along with the other white bushing in the top. Place the retaining bracket with the fresh felt washer on the poppet flange and tighten the hex nut hand tight. Insert the stem subassembly and smaller spring. Hold the stem in place with the spring slightly compressed and place the poppet flange in the vise with the top side up. Gently Tighten the vise, being sure not to warp or scratch the sealing surface. You just need it to be tight enough to hold the assembly. Insert the rivet through the lever and secure the cotter pin. Flip the poppet assembly over and gently secure in the vise. Insert the lightly greased poppet flange gasket into the groove. Place the skirt on the poppet assembly. If not using new parts, always clean the inside and the outside of all the components before assembling the nozzle. Next, grease and place the floating or gliding o-ring over the poppet. Insert the large spring into the stem. Be sure that the o-ring doesn't become pinched or kinked when inserting the poppet into the stem. You will only need to push the stem down a small distance to be able to insert the retaining pin. Keep in mind that the action should smoothly operate without the gliding o-ring becoming pinched or bunched up. Place the greased gasket into the nozzle body channel. Insert the pin in the lever next. Remember that only pressure holds this pin in place until the handle is installed, so be careful not to lose it. Insert the poppet assembly into the nozzle body. To keep slight tension on the poppet assembly, pull up the handle slightly until the o-ring is even between the two halves, and then insert a wrench into the space just below the lever as shown, while being sure that the lever has enough tension on it to allow the poppet assembly flange to rest evenly on the nozzle body. Tighten one of the short bolts just snug and the other hand tight.
Then remove the wrench that is maintaining your tension on the lever. Next, remove the hand tight bolt and place a small drop of medium strength thread locker on the threads and then tighten snug. Remove the other bolt and repeat the process. Now check the action of the lever to be sure that nothing is binding. Insert the white bearing into the swivel, being sure to seat it all the way around, followed by the felt dust seal. Insert the retaining ring with the three threaded holes onto the swivel. Next, insert the white plastic thrust bearing. After that, insert the keyed metal washer onto the swivel, lining up the flats with the flats on the swivel assembly until it falls into place. Install the lock ring by placing one half on the swivel assembly. With the other half, lock in one side, then carefully squeeze to click in the other side. Be careful not to scar any components while using the wrench. Be very gentle. Once again, clean the surface of the swivel before installing the O-rings. Install one greased O-ring next, being sure that it fits all the way down to the groove shown here. Insert the white plastic ring next being sure that the tapered part is facing the nozzle body when the swivel assembly is inserted. Next, insert the final swivel O-ring onto the last groove. Insert the continuity ring next. Keep in mind that this may look bent, but it's designed that way to maintain conductivity. While inserting the swivel assembly into the nozzle body, carefully line up the threaded holes in the retaining ring with the nozzle body holes. Thread the three bolts into the nozzle body, being careful not to cross-thread the bolts. If your pin has fallen out of the handle during the reassembly process, be sure to replace it before installing the handle. Line up the handle with the bolt holes and thread one of the short bolts through the handle on the inlet side of the nozzle. Before you thread the bolt into the nozzle body, however, be sure that one of these bolts on the inlet side is also threaded through the grounding strap. Using your 7 16th socket, tighten the bolts just snug for now. Now slide the end of the cap and the chain through one of the longer bolts and thread it through the handle and into the nozzle body. Tighten these two bolts just snug, then using an X pattern, tighten all four of the poppet bolts, then the two shorter bolts. Thoroughly clean the strainer screen, being sure to replace it if the mesh is broken. Be sure that the O-ring, gasket, and sealing surface are clean of any debris or film. Place the strainer in the spout and using a strap wrench, tighten the spout to the nozzle body. Please note to be very careful if you use a pair of pliers to tighten the spout. Do not scratch, gouge, or warp the spout. Test the nozzle with air before placing it into service. We recommend that you watch our short video on how to adjust the shutoff rate of the 295 series nozzle now. If you need further information or support, visit opwglobal.com or call our technical support line at 877-679-8324.